Welcome back to Hunter x Hunter Anime Review. This is this is special number seven, and this one we're reviewing the eight hundred, uh, the not eight hundred, oh, think of One Piece. This is the three hundred and seventy eighth chapter of the Hunter x Hunter manga. I've seen some other viewers, I've seen a couple of viewers do this, where they actually show like pages from manga, like on a tablet or phone. I have it here on my phone, though you can't exactly see it because it's very glary. This chapter is called. Balance. Yep. So the thing opens up in the cafeteria, which is kind of where they ended with the last chapter, with them still looking for Hitsuga. They have some dinner, and then we cut to one of the brothers and one of the princes. This is head of the Zayu family, O'Neill Longbow. He's the illegitimate half brother of the third prince. Okay. He's having a phone conversation, and if you see this guy's phone, you're like, really? This big phone? Look at something out of the 90s. Look, look at this thing. It's huge. Yeah, I, ho I hope I don't get copyright infringement for this. But yeah, I hope that the I hope I don't get copyright infringement for, for this particular video, but I had to show that off. It's only briefly. So... He talks his big phone all about extortion stuff like that. He talks to this other guy. He talks to the fixer for the seventh prince, Bracho Yu, head of the Char family. Yeah, I think these are like mobsters. Yeah, it's just conversation back and forth. More talking. And then we cut to... A, a woman looks like she's wearing a crown of thorns on her head. She's got a scar across her eye, which is bizarre. Yeah, a few characters I've seen here have got scars. I mean, the illegitimate brother's got a scar across his forehead. Uh, the head of the Char family, he's got a scar across his face. Just kind of like um, Crocodile from One Piece. Yeah, he had the same thing as well. Though for him, it was one scar... This guy, it's two. See some lieutenants. And we cut to the head of the higher family, Maria Pride, the illegitimate daughter of the... of Nasuhayu, the basically of the fourth prince. Yeah. And she just talks, sees some people, and then she sees a woman. She's a woman with uh, pigtails. And she's like, I can't your power. And she just, and of course the woman's blushing, grabs her arm, and then she makes out with her. Yep. Yeah, a lesbian kiss in in this particular manga. Wow, that's something. Yeah, a lesbian kiss in a manga. Though it's not the first one I've seen. Because Yuri manga basically are, it, well, it this is not exactly Yuri manga, but... Hey, why not have something that's interesting? A lesbian kiss. Seriously, like if you kill a prince, you'll gain you you will gain fifty levels. So yeah, bon voyage. See some person look like they're strapped onto a bed. Some razor blades. Looks like she yeah she has a scar. Yeah, it's something like across the nose. It's like across like right eye. Basically, it's like right over here. Mm -hmm. I think she did that herself. And you have to basically turn the panel on its side. Yeah, that's basically how this works. Is that you have to... For this one particular panel, you have... Where, where she's like showing up this bunch of stuff going around the ship. You have to turn your head and read this. It says, to order rip down the asshole of a world. Yeah, I have no idea why she does that. We see some, a map to the ship. And then we cut to the phantom troops looking for Hitsuga. And they come across like a door, possibly to one of the other levels. And you see it like sort of a black market. Look around this big room. Uh, they found someone get shot, looks like about four times. And then we and then we cut to the third pass third deck passenger area. Because of the crime scene stuff. And then the uh Chapter ends with the, a member of the Helia family, level 21, opening up what looks like the ceiling and looking down at three members of Phantom Troop. 
And that's really it. So, mostly a lot of talking. I mean, it's nice to see the Phantom Troop, for the most part. But I would say the most shocking thing of this whole chapter is the lesbian kiss. Yeah, I did not expect to see that happen here, but yeah. But otherwise, though, not much else to say about this particular chapter. Just lots and lots of talking. Yeah, mostly put, it's an okay chapter. Not as interesting as last chapter. But this particular woman is probably the most interesting character I've seen so far. Uh, this whole arc, because, well, she has sort of, she's kind of like a cult leader in a way. Where she has this, where she grants you a power. But the whole lesbian kiss, that basically was surprising. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, though, not much else to say about this particular chapter. And, once again, Karapika is absent from the chapter again. Yeah, this is the second chapter in a row that he is nowhere to be seen. Alright, so... So, basically, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next video I'm going to do, like, not long after this one. I want to talk about the newest chapter for Tokyo Ghoulry. And that will be chapter number... 164. Alright? But... Until we see you in the next video, bye.